Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com. Let's talk about what I thought was one of the better fights I've seen, strategically. Bernard Hopkins versus Chad Dawson took place last night. But before I do, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, um, I enjoyed last night's fight a great deal. Uh, Bernard Hopkins is really fun to watch. If you're looking at a guy who has figured out the sport and who um, does things strategically that can throw a much more gifted, much more talented, bigger, stronger, faster opponent off balance. Now, I thought Chad Dawson won the fight. Um, I have a pre-fight video up where I made a prediction on that fight. You can listen to it. Chad Dawson um, did do enough to win the fight. I thought Dawson won the fight by at least a couple of rounds, right? But I've never seen Chad Dawson as confused as I did yesterday. I thought there was a difference between Chad Dawson starting slow and being surprised by uh, Jean Pascal's aggressiveness in the first two, three rounds of that fight. I thought there's a big difference between that and this fight where Chad Dawson, quite frankly, at times was strategically outthought, right? Uh, Bernard Hopkins, all I can say is, um, just picture I'm a southpaw, so I'm leading, right? I'm leading with my right. And let's say I have a great jab, right? So I'm Chad Dawson. And I keep my feet far apart. There's a length dynamic that I've mastered. In other words, I'm turned this way. I'm tall. I'm sticking a jab in your face, right? And you have to go through the jab to get to me. And I'm leaning back where when I throw my power left, I have wide coverage. In other words, I hit you with a jab here. If you dart this way to get away from the jab, then I can throw the left and I can hit you way off at an angle. In other words, it's very hard to avoid what I'm doing, right? That's Chad Dawson. But of course, Bernard Hopkins can avoid a jab in his sleep. So as Dawson comes forward, Bernard Hopkins, without throwing punches, and that's the key. It's a low volume fight, right? Neither guy lands 170 punches. Right? Without throwing punches, Bernard Hopkins is dancing away from the jab. This is actually a footwork fight because as Bernard dances away from the jab and forces Dawson to turn to find him, right? As Dawson turns, Bernard is literally jumping in behind Dawson's lead shoulder. If you look at the film, it's interesting. Same move he did that ended the first fight. If you recall, he gets on Dawson's back. Remember, Dawson's turned this way because he's a lefty, right? Dawson uh, Hopkins was able to jump on his back in the first fight. And then when Dawson leaned up, Hopkins fell down. In this fight, it's interesting. What Hopkins does is he gets in back of Dawson's lead shoulder, right? But keep in mind, Hopkins is a righty. So he jumps in, right, on the back here area, and then he would throw a right hand that Dawson, who fights long, right, fights perpendicular to him, couldn't block. Because what Hopkins is doing is Hopkins is making sure that his left foot 
is on the outside. So when he jumps in behind Dawson, right, Dawson's defenseless, right? When Hopkins jumps in behind Dawson and Dawson is turning and they're ready to grapple, Hopkins still has his right hand free. So Hopkins leaps in, and keep in mind, you know, a punch is power, it's really its velocity, right? Hopkins is literally with a running start several times, running in, trying to get right behind Dawson's shoulder so he could, with a running start, land a right hand. It's actually really ingenious. I uh, felt at times like I was watching Evander Holifield against Nikolai Valuev because it was Holifield who showed us how to beat Valuev. And then, of course, David Hay, following the Holifield blueprint, beat Valuev. I believe that in this fight, if someone extremely talented, and I mean extremely talented, looks at the film of this fight, someone like and Andre Ward, right? If someone really talented looks at this film, they might be able to find a way to, at a minimum, tie up Chad Dawson like Hopkins did. Because another Hopkins move, and view this back of the shoulder thing as kind of like a door to get inside on Chad Dawson. Because if you cannot get inside on Chad Dawson, you're finished. He's one of the best in the sport, right? If you're at arm's length, you're finished. If you try to outbox Chad Dawson, you're finished, right? Dawson just beat a very good boxer, right? What you have to do is find a way to get inside on Dawson. And if you're unable to land that right hand because Dawson is slick. Dawson's changing the angles as well, and Dawson faints. So Dawson's fainting a jab, so sometimes Bernard would jump in and Dawson would be ready for him, right? This is the sport at the highest level. So another move Dawson uh, Hopkins did was Hopkins would just jump in on Chad Dawson right, would then try to wrestle him as Dawson would turn, understand, I believe, and this is controversial, not a statement of fact, just an opinion, but I believe that Bernard Hopkins has three weapons in the ring, a right hand, a left hand, and his head. And I believe there were times in this fight, in fact, Dawson talked about being butted eight times. Eight. I believe there were times in this fight where Bernard Hopkins jumps in over Dawson's lead back shoulder and literally he just jumps in to stand up against Dawson and as Dawson turns around to try to defend himself, I think Bernard making it look natural because, you know, I don't believe in a lot of coincidences. I believe Bernard Hopkins then would lean his head quickly and hit Chad Dawson on the side of his head. I want you to look at the first cut that Dawson suffered, right? If you believe headbutts are a minor part of the game, just look at that first cut, right? The referee and the replays both indicated that it was caused by what they're calling an accidental headbutt. Was it accidental? I mean, didn't the clash of heads happen so often in this fight? Do you really believe it was accidental? Well, let me just say this. That cut was about an inch long. Now, um, as HBO noted, the superstar of the night was Chad Dawson's cut man. Because the minute that cut happened, you knew it happened because you saw blood on Chad Dawson's shoulder, right? That's how deep the wound was. The cut happened before you saw the cut, you saw the blood. 
Now the question I have for you is how hard would you have to hit a man to open a one inch gash like that? Right? I believe that what Hopkins was doing was literally leaping in and then using his head while they were tied up. In other words, it's literally a strategy. You're facing an elite defensive fighter. You know that if you box him straight up, the guy is going to block a lot of your shots and you're going to be dealing with length because you're only getting a side profile on the guy. So what you do is he's in front of you. You make sure you have your left foot, if you're a righty, outside his foot, right? So then you're able to leap in and either try to land a right hand as you're leaping, right? Because, of course, you're already inside his jab. Or you leap in to tie him up with really the goal of, during the tie-up, moving your head into his, right? Dawson gets busted up around both eyes. Even though we never see Hopkins land a really hard punch that stuns Dawson, during the post-fight interview, Dawson says that he has a headache, right? Let me also point out, too, that we know that Bernard Hopkins is skilled to the point where when he's tied up with a fighter and the referee is over here, Right? We know that Hopkins has figured out the referee's line of vision. So Hopkins will sometimes hit his opponent with his other hand. You can call it whatever you want, strategy, dirty fighting, whatever. But that's what Hopkins does. Now is it that hard to believe that if Hopkins is willing to hit a guy with the hand that's outside the referee's vision while he's tied up with the guy, is it that hard to believe that Hopkins has also figured out how he can hit a guy with his head where the referee's line of vision is blocked? In other words, if Chad Dawson's head is between mine and the referee and we're tangled up by design, I've jumped in to tangle up Chad Dawson. Is it a reach to believe that I might know that the referee can't see my head. And I might then be able to just lean my head quickly into his head. Keep in mind, too, you know, let's talk about heads for a second, right? You know, if I hit a guy here, I might not open up a gash on the guy, right, with, with the head. But if I know how to use my head just like soccer player knows how to use his head to knock the ball in with his head if I know how to use my head what's to stop me from using the side of my head right where I'm not gonna open up a gash right using the side of my head against the other guy's eye area where you know particularly if the other guy's a fighter there might be scar tissue. Wasn't Dawson cut around the eyes in the Pascal fight? If I hit you with the side of my head up on your eyebrow area, mightn't that, you know, might that open up a cut right around that area? Right? And let me just say this too. You know, if I open up a cut around that area, now it didn't happen last night, but couldn't that also impact your vision? In other words, you might see stars. You might have blood you know, streaming down into your eye and stuff like that. Boxing's a game of angles. I thought Bernard Hopkins yesterday showed us a master of angles and clinching at his absolute best. Right? He barely got roughed up by Chad Dawson. And Chad Dawson was trying to pursue him. Dawson's corner, uh, John Scully, kept telling Dawson, look, just pursue him. 
don't allow Bernard Hopkins to just dance around on the outside, right? And Dawson has pretty good foot speed. Dawson's pursuing Hopkins, but Hopkins literally was able to fight a measured intermittent fight and was able to literally play the angles. He knew exactly the angle to hop in on Southpaw Chad Dawson, right? Now, let's go further, right? I thought at the end of the day, Dawson landed enough jabs and used enough length and diffused enough clinches to win legitimately on points, right? I'm not sure if I would have scored this fight 9-3 like some of the judges did. I really saw the fight more as a 7-5 uh, type fight, right? I thought it was a little bit closer. I, I, I did not score it a draw, right? I scored it 7-5, you know, maybe 8-4 for Chad Dawson. Right? But think about it. Until he fought Joe Calzaghe, Bernard Hopkins was unbeaten against Southpaws. Now understand, Calzaghe is a different type of Southpaw. He doesn't, he's almost like Powell Wolak in that a lot of Southpaws have a lead shoulder, they're turned to the side. Right? Joe Calzaghe would come up, have hand speed. He'd be a little bit off at an angle, but he would then throw. It's a two-handed attack. He really wouldn't have a lead shoulder. He would be more square up in front of you. Right? Well, Chad Dawson is what Hopkins is more familiar with. A southpaw with a lead right shoulder. And, of course, Hopkins knew to hop behind the shoulder, right? It's not a rabbit punch. He's not hitting Dawson in the back of the head. What he would do is he would jump up and try to land a right hand. If, Daw if Dawson turned, he would tie up Dawson. Then, of course, they're wrestling. If the referee is over here, Hopkins would have an opportunity to land a headbutt. Hey, it's a rough sport, right? On Dawson's eye, that was away from the referee. Well, think about it. After the fight, at the post-fight press conference, who does Hopkins want to fight next? Lucien Boutte. Now, all I can say is, let's think it through. Chad Dawson, long, lanky, southpaw. Lucien Boutte, long, lanky, southpaw. And like Dawson, Boutte leads with his right shoulder. So let me just say this, a guy who's on top of the game like Bernard Hopkins, I thought it was a great performance. I'm leaving Hopkins on my list of the best pound for pound fighters in the world, right? I don't care if Hopkins is 47 or 57. He's still an elite fighter. I mean, by elite, I mean, I think he's competitive in any match he's in, including the match he was in yesterday, right? But, let's be clear, he believes he has a style that works against a particular type of fighter. And a fighter who fights long, guys who fight long, typically aren't accustomed to guys right up on them. And Hopkins is going to use every trick in the book to win. Right? He fought Winky Wright. There was a headbutt in that fight. He fought Chad Dawson. There's a headbutt in this fight. There's even a moment in this fight where Hopkins spins around. Looks like he's about to dive outside the ring, but then stops at the ropes, right? You're talking about a master guy, master defensively, who knows how to play angles. I thought it was fascinating to watch. I encourage everyone to watch this fight again and just look at how many times Bernard Hopkins is able to get inside and tie up Chad Dawson. I've watched many Chad Dawson fights. I've never seen that before. I thought it was a great fight strategically. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com and dwyrvip.com. Thanks for watching.